sweet song, a story of St. Romanos the Melodist. Rising in the dark, young Romanos carefully folded his one blanket, splashed his face from the chilled water in the basin and dressed. He stood quietly near his window, feeling the winter air press its way through the walls. Thy will be done, he prayed as he hurried to the church, hoping to greet the first shafts of winter sunlight as they entered the massive space. Sliding the largest of all his large keys into the side door, he entered. Silence, he thought, smiling. Such blessed silence. Just you and me and the angels in this glorious place. Christmas was only two days away and his list of tasks was a mile long. After lighting the many lamps, Romano started on his duties. He polished the spoons, lampstands, and chalices. He mended the hole in Father's cassock. He carted oil from the market for the oil lamps, and he scrubbed the windows on the west side until they shone. But there was sadness that wrapped its way around Romanos. That morning, he was moving service books when several readers entered the room. I don't know why the patriarch pays such favor to him, they complained. He can hardly read. And is singing? The youngest boy laughed before he even finished the sentence. The hardest part was, Romanos knew what they said was true. Romanos went about his work, his shoulders hunched and his throat tight. If only I had the gift of song. He rubbed his beautiful table while he prayed. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. The next day was Christmas Eve, and Romanos worked hurriedly to complete his long list of tasks. The church was filled with priests and deacons and children running errands for their parents. And although Romanos loved being in the great church all alone, he also liked to see it busy with life and love for God. Christmas Eve arrived, and the emperor himself joined the people for the service. In the middle of liturgy, Romanos was tending an oil lamp when suddenly he was pushed onto the ambo and left there alone. You're paid like one of us, a reader whispered fiercely in his ear. Sing praises as we do. Romanos's mind and heart filled with fear. What do I do, he thought. Then he prayed, hoping words of inspiration, a song might float into his tongue. The emperor and the patriarch and all the priests and all the people waited and watched, and waited and watched. Romanos tried to form a melody, but a song did not come. He stumbled from the ambo, every eye following him as he retreated behind the choir. There he stayed silent and humiliated. When the service ended, the emperor, the patriarch, and all the people left. Romanos fell on his knees before an icon to pray. Into the night he prayed to the Mother of God. He prayed for mercy, for grace, and for more of Christ's love to fill him. And he prayed for music. How he wanted to praise God with a strong and clear voice and with words that inspired people deep in their very hearts. His tears tumbled one after another onto the marble floor until he fell into a deep, deep sleep. Before daylight, Romanos had a dream. The mother of God herself came and placed a small scroll onto his lips. She told him to swallow it, a strange request. Romanos swallowed the scroll and awoke. He slowly stretched his aching body and noticed a sweet taste lingering on his lips. He wondered, could the dream have been real? The church was crowded for Christmas vigil. Romanos rejoiced when he opened a prayer book and swiftly read the words. Understanding sprang into his mind and a song swept through his ears. He tested his voice. He could sing. He prayed in front of the icon of Mary, bowing low and crossing himself in wonder and thanks. Liturgy began, and it was time to sing a hymn honoring the birth of Christ. With the patriarch's blessing, Romanos bravely stepped to the ambo, and as the sweet words formed in his mind, they spilled into his lips. 
Today the virgin gives birth to the one who transcends all, and the earth offers a cave to the one who cannot be approached. Angels with the shepherds sing his glory, and the wise men with the star travel on their way. For our sake a young child is born who is God from all eternity. The emperor and the patriarch and all the people were amazed by the sweet song of Romanos. They joined him in singing the last line together, Who is God from all eternity? Early one morning, the youngest of the readers followed Romanos into the empty church. They knelt together in prayer. Forgive me, the youngest one whispered when they were done. I was a fool. As Christ forgives me, so I forgive you, Romanos replied. Now, shall we fill this glorious place with song? And so they did.